it's gone. How's my sound? Good. Good to go. I'm, I'm ready when we're ready. Okay, I'll let you know. Okay, we can start when you're ready. All right, you got it. Welcome everybody, thank you for attending. Uh, today's public hearing of the 2021 Reapportionment Commission proposed legislative and congressional reapportionment plans. Could the secretary please confirm which commissioners are present? Vice Chair Nonaka. Here. Commissioner Chip Chase. Excuse, Commissioner Chun. Here. Commissioner Kennedy. Excuse, Chair Muguishi. Here. Chair, uh, Commissioner Nakota. Here. Commissioner Nishimura. I see him. Commissioner Ono. Here. Commissioner Rathbun. I also see him, he must be on mute. Okay, so all commissioners are present with the exception of Commissioners Chip Chase and Commissioners Kennedy. Commissioner Kennedy. All right, thank you all for attending. The commission is holding public hearings to provide an opportunity for interested persons to submit views, arguments, or data orally or in writing related to the proposed reapportionment plans for the state of Hawaii, for the state legislature, the proposed legislative plan, and Hawaii's two United States congressional districts, the proposed congressional plan. The proposed legislative plan reflects the allocation of the total number of members of each house of the state legislature among the four basic island units, namely one, the island of Hawaii, two, the islands of Maui, Lanai, and Molokai, and Kahoa'alawe, the islands of Oahu and all other not specifically enumerated, and for the islands of Kauai and Niihau. Using the total number of permanent residents in each basic island unit and computed by the method known as the method of equal proportions, except that no basic island unit shall, have, shall receive less than one member in each house. The proposed legislative plan also reflects the appointment of single member districts within each basic island unit and redistricting guided by the constitutional criteria, district lines were drawn to minimize population deviations between districts, preserve traditional communities, avoid canoe districting, spanning multiple basic island units and minimize the disruption to existing districts. The proposed congressional plan reflects the appointment of two members among single member districts so that the average number of persons in the total population counted in a 2020 United States Census per member in each district is as nearly equal as practicable. The reapportionment plans are available to view online at elections.hawaii.gov. Additionally, the, the reapportionment plans and maps <clears throat> are available for public inspection at, give me a second, One, the Hilo Public, the Hilo County Clerk's Office, 
in Hilo and Kona, Hilo Public Library, University of Hawaii at Hilo Library, Kailua Kona Public Library, Kekua Public Library, Keau Public School and Library, Lapahoehoe Public School and Library, Na Lehu Public School, a public library, Pahoa Community and School Library, Delmo Parker Public and School Library, Maui County Clerk's Office, Hana Public School and Library, Lahaina Public Library, Molokai Library, Lanai Public and School Library, Kauai County Clerk's Office, Hana Pepe Public Library, Kapa Public Library, Koloa Public Library, Princeville Public Library, Hawaii State Library, City and County of Honolulu Clerk's Office, Kaimoki Library, Office of Elections, Kapole Public Library, Mililani Public Library, Pearl City Public Library, Kahuku Public and School Library, and the Kaneohe Public Library. Pursuant to public notice that was published on November 9, 2021, the Reapportionment Commission gave public notice that it will be conducting its public hearings remotely using interactive conference technology. The public may view the video and audio of the public hearings through a video conference link available online at elections.hawaii.gov. In, in the alternative, the public may listen to the audio of the hearings through a telephone number that is available online at elections.hawaii.gov. Each public hearing will seek to focus on a particular geographic area, but the public may comment on any aspect of the proposed legislative plan or proposed congressional plan. Views, arguments, or data orally or in writing may be submitted at any public hearing or mail to the chair of the 2021 Reapportionment Commission at 802 Lehua Avenue, Pro City, Hawaii 96782 or by email at reapportionment at hawaii.gov. This hearing is being recorded and will be posted on the Office of Elections website at elections.hawaii.gov. As a reminder to the public, your microphone will be muted until you are called on. At this time, we'll move into public testimony. A list of testifiers who have submitted their names before the hearing has been added to the chat. As technical issues may arise, we will give each testifier a few moments to try and resolve any connection issues. However, if the issues cannot be resolved, we will have to move on to the next testifier. If you would like to testify, please click raise hand under the reactions on Zoom. If you are joining us by phone, please press star nine. When recognized, please unmute your microphone before speaking. You may also turn on your video at this time. For the record, please state your first and last name and the items that you will be testifying on. For those, testi for those testifiers joining us by phone, we will not have your name and will be identifying you by the last four digits of your phone number. To ensure that we have sufficient time to hear all testimony, each testifier will have three minutes to testify. Once your time has expired, you will be asked to conclude your remarks and we will move on to the next testifier. Would the secretary please announce the first testifier? Before we get, begin, I would like to um, acknowledge Commissioner Chip Chase has joined the meeting. The first testifier is Bob and Esther Peruzzo. Okay, next testifier is Roberta Mayer. Aloha commissioners. My name is Roberta Mayer. I'm president of the Hawaii Kai Neighborhood Board. And I have resubmitted as written testimony, the resolution passed unanimously by the Hawaii Kai Board uh, opposing the reapportionment commission's proposed maps. Our community is extremely distressed and disappointed with the redistricting plans that have been um, submitted. The Hawaii Kai, Wamanalo, and Kailua neighborhood boards are united in our opposition to the maps being proposed by the Reapportionment Commission's technical group. The proposed maps fail to maintain the historic natural boundary of Makapu'u Point between the districts. And I'd like to point out that all of the alternate maps submitted by other community members maintain Makapu'u Point as the natural boundary. So it is highly possible for the technical group to do the same as they redraw the boundary maps. The alternate community maps also for the Senate districts 25 and nine 
also maintain uh, Makapu Point as the natural boundary. And so we urge the commission to also correct the boundary maps for those Senate districts as well as the House districts. The maps proposed by the technical group carve out large portions of the Hawaii Kai community and diminishes the community's voice. And nonsensically, the proposed maps take our flagship high school, Kaiser High School, and places it into the Windward House District 51 and Senate District 25. The technical group's maps also ignore the decades long commitment of the Hawaii Kai community to protect and preserve the Kaibi coastline. The community successfully obtained designation of the Kaibi coastline as a Hawaii State Scenic Byway. The plan could also diminish the voice of our native Hawaiians by squeezing Waimanalo between disparate neighborhoods. Again, we strongly urge the Reapportionment Commission to redraw the maps to maintain Makapu Point as one of the natural boundaries between House Districts 51 and 17 and Senate Districts 9 and 25, and to utilize the alternate Hicks maps as the basis for redrawing these districts. Thank you for the opportunity to share our many concerns with you. Thank you, Roberto. Scott. Next testifier is Bill Hicks. Aloha. Uh, I'm Bill Hicks, Chairman of the Kailua Neighborhood Board. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify today. The proposed reapportionment plan would create a very contorted House District 51, uh, stretching from Lanakai to Portlock. Uh, it would therefore mix Windward Oahu with East Oahu in a single district, diluting the voices of Kailua, Waimanalo, and Hawaii Kai. Now, this is not a good idea. Makapu'u Point should be a natural boundary, the same as Kaina Point. This is how the districts have historically been drawn in the way the city council districts still are. Commissioners encouraged mm -hmm. residents to use the interactive maps to make and submit plans for your consideration, so I did that. Here's what I learned. Every change has a cascading effect on other districts. Wrapping the Kailua Waimanalo House District 51 around Makapu Point all the way to Portlock causes a lot of disruption in East Oahu. Because the proposed plan surrenders significant Hawaii Kai population to District 51, this directly causes a more radical movement of East Oahu district boundaries westward. It therefore splits Hawaii Kai splits Manoa Valley, and the proposal essentially runs out of population at House District 19, thus shifting 19 to Leeward Oahu, causing the existing House District 19 territory to be split among four House Districts. This major East Oahu disruption has prompted the Hawaii Kai, Kaimuki, Diamond Head, Kapahulu, St. Louis Heights, Manoa, Macaulay, Moa'ili, Ili, and Ala Moana Kaka'ako neighborhood boards in addition to the Kailua, Waimanalo, and Pearl City boards to all adopt resolutions opposed to the proposed plan. It doesn't have to be this way. It is entirely viable to use both Makapu'u Point and Kaina Point as boundaries. If the boundary between districts 17 and 51 remained Makapu'u Point, as demonstrated in the alternative so-called Hicks plan, there is less radical movement of the East Oahu district boundaries westward Hawaii Kai would remain intact. Manoa Valley would remain intact. The Hicks plan doesn't run out of population until House District 32, and it would be 32 instead of 19 that shifts to Leeward Oahu. Therefore, the Hicks plan has a much less radical impact on House District 19. Also, the remaining House District 31 that would absorb much of 32 would actually be more compact and contiguous than the current House Districts 31 and 32. As much as possible, effort was made to make districts contiguous and compact and use mountain ridges, streams, and highways to keep neighborhoods intact. The original Hicks plan without a Mililani excursion achieved a population deviation of only 2.65%, contrast 2.65% deviation with the commission's proposed plan with an 8.54 population. Uh, there's a 
case. Uh, to, uh, the same process to the Senate districts with the same outcomes. I urge the commission to seriously consider my plan as well as others submitted by concerned citizens. I'm happy to answer any questions. Mahalo. Thank you, Bill. Up next. The next testifier is Bart Dean. Aloha members. Let's see, where's my camera? You're on. Oh, I'm on. Okay, hold on. Let me let me do it this way then. Okay, I'm turning around, trying to get around the technical limitations. Um, so people can, my name is Bart Dame. I live in East Honolulu. Uh, you can see my email address there in the picture. It's bedame at gmail.com if people want to get in touch with me to find out further uh, any of my ideas or to share theirs. Um, also, I have a, uh, a Hawaii reapportioned study group on Facebook, which is open to the public, and people can go there and they can find out a lot of information or share information so that we can do this in a transparent way. Uh, we have data there that is not publicly available, including the new Department of Defense PACOMS uh, information on the residency of military personnel and their dependents. So I'd like to start off by talking about the uh, criteria uh, that are supposed to be guiding reapportionment. This is from a slideshow that was presented uh, by the staff. I think it was Royce Jones presented this slideshow uh, and it shows the redistricting criteria. And uh, I'd like to point out these criteria must be followed as closely as practicable. Uh, that word practicable seems to be interpreted differently by different people. That is not, to be interpreted in a loosey goosey fashion. Uh, it means that, uh, in fact, I'll give you a, a quote legal definition. Um, so anyways, here are the criteria. And um, I think we can evaluate the plans based on how closely they follow the criteria. Here is the definition of practicable from two different sources online. One is Black's Law Dictionary, which is sort of the definitive legal dictionary. It says practicable is an idea or project which can be brought to fruition or reality without doing, without any unreasonable demands. The second dictionary down here says, which is law insider, practical means available and capable of being done after taking into consideration costs, existing technology and logistics in light of overall project purposes. So I suggest that uh, the criteria must be followed uh, as closely as practicable, which means because there's a trade-off between competing imperatives, uh, it means that sometimes you have to trade off one for the other, but the commission is not free to just do whatever it wants. It must justify the relaxation of one criterion by showing how this is forced on them by other criteria. So here's the proposed map by the uh, commission. Uh, I think this is the map that they are trying to railroad through um, if you look at these districts, they are not compact by any definition. Uh, look at what's happening here with House District 18. Look at what's happening here with House District 21 going all the way from Macaulay to Diamond Head. Look what's happened to 20 and how it's forced to go down Kapahulu and Lower Kaimaki. Now compare that with the uh, map that uh, Bill Hicks has, has introduced. These are compact, reasonable districts that preserve community. So maybe you think that the uh, commission was forced by population pressures, but if you look at the numbers, they have great deviations. If you want more information, please go to uh, my site. You will see the, the information's there. Also like to point out that 51 is almost identical to the historical caricature of what a bad district looks like. This is the gerrymander map from Massachusetts in the early part of the 19th century. It is almost identical to what they are trying to do with House District 51. So please, if you have any questions here, uh, ask them of me. Otherwise, go to my Hawaii Reapportion Facebook group and we can discuss it there. Thank you much. I'm available for questions. Thank you, Bart. Scott, next testifier, please. Next testifier is William Sims. Is there anyone who's going to be in favor of this damn thing? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, uh, we support, uh, I live in, uh, my name is William Sims and uh, I live in Kalama Valley for 17 years. And we support uh, the Bill Hicks plan and Roberta Mayer. 
I attended the 28 October uh, commission hearing and a lot of the um, s complaints about the current plan are being voiced again, but yet the commission voted to go ahead and approve it and go to these hearings. I'd like to know what is the way forward for the commission to take these complaints into consideration. Thank you. Okay, the next testifier is Lisa Bishop. Ah, there you go. Thank you very much. Aloha, reapportionment commission. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today. I'd like to provide uh, a quick testimony, not only on behalf of Friends of Hanama Bay, but also on my own part as a private citizen. I did provide written testimony earlier in the week to your commission. So as president of Friends of Hanama Bay, we strongly oppose the adoption of the reapportionment commission's proposed plans for the House and the Senate districts because they needlessly and capriciously transfer the environmental stewardship of the Ka'ibi coastline from the residents of Hawaii Kai who have successfully stewarded this precious environmental resource for over 50 years. Um, it would be a travesty to move that stewardship and that pride of stewardship from the residents of Hawaii Kai. As a private citizen, as Bill Hicks and others have mentioned, there have been at least 10 neighborhood boards who have unanimously um, provided um, um, resolutions in direct opposition of the um, reapportionment commission's proposed plans. And each of these neighborhoods, neighborhood boards represent at least 30,000 people. And so I strongly urge the reapportionment commission to adopt the Bill Hicks plans and, and move forward from this point based on that foundation for reapportionment of Oahu's House and Senate districts. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Mahalo. Okay, next testifier is Jeannie Johnson. Okay, moving on, next testifier is Judy Sobin. Aloha. Um, my name is Judy Sobin, and I am a realtor, and I am a member of the school community councils of both Kaiser High School and Kamilawiki Elementary School. My testimony today is submitted as an individual. I know the Reapportionment Commission has worked hard and has, has a lot of information that it has reviewed. I've done my best to do my own review and to... Um, look at the landmarks that everybody has mentioned, which are the most important. Others like Mr. Hicks has, from Kailua have done excellent work and I support the revised plans that have been submitted. While I live in Hawaii Kai, I sell properties throughout Oahu. My recommendation that follows is based upon what I have seen and what I know is coming. We can expect few, few, very few population changes in Hawaii Kai, or for that matter, in East Honolulu, Waimanalo, or Kailua over the next 10 years. The same cannot be said for the middle of Oahu, nor for the west side of our island where there is population growth and shifting populations as well. Based upon that, I would hope that the commission would spend most of their time working on those districts and making sure that as much con contiguity can be kept there, as well as in our own uh, East Honolulu and Kailua areas. I recommend that the commission leave the neighborhoods intact that are working well in our neighborhoods already. Uh, and District 17 and Senate District 9 are two of those. Thank you very much for your time. The next testifier is Del Moana Gilmartin. Hello, 
uh, commissioners. Uh, my name is Dale Monagil Martin. Thank you for your time today. I am a member of the board of directors for Malama Manoa, but I'm speaking today as a private citizen. I don't want to repeat any of the good points that were made. Uh, I don't want to waste anybody's time, but as a 40 plus uh, year resident of Manoa, I'm really opposed splitting our valley. We have been such a tight knit community over a century. We've accomplished many things as a community. We deserve to be represented by somebody who is on the side of our community, not split in half and be represented by politicians who may or may not have our best interests at heart. We've uh, we've done things like stopping the power lines over Wa'ahila Ridge. We've stopped the monkey pod trees from being cut down at um, Manoa Marketplace. We have a tremendous historic district here that really should not be split. And I, I urge you to continue to listen to some of these really fine citizens. And please, just from my selfish Manoa perspective, please don't split Manoa. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Aloha. Next testifier is Matthew Prowberg. Aloha Chair, uh, Commissioners and neighbors. Mahalo for stepping up to serve our state during this once in a decade process. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify this afternoon. My name is Matt Prowberg and I am the chair of the Makali Mo'ili Ili Neighborhood Board number eight. The Makali Mo'ili Ili Neighborhood Board strongly urges the commission to reject the proposed state legislative redistricting plan. At our meeting this past Thursday, our board passed a resolution strongly urging the commission to reject this plan um, and a copy of uh, this resolution is attached to our testimony. Additionally, while I cannot speak on its behalf, at its November meeting, the Diamond Head, Kapahulu, and St. Louis uh, Heights Neighborhood Board voted unanimously to support our board in its attempts to pass this resolution. We understand that what you guys are doing is tough. There's no such thing as a perfect map, and sometimes communities have to be split. In Makalimo Ili'ili, currently we are split between four representative districts. Um, currently, our opposition is due to the proposed House District 21 and House District 22 map. Generally speaking, for those of you who don't know, Makalimo Ili'ili is the area um, with a north boundary or a Makai boundary, uh, excuse me, a Makai boundary of the Alawai Canal, uh, Malka boundary of the H1 freeway, um, and then approximately Kapahulu Avenue to Kapiolani Boulevard. Proposed House District 21 is being drawn to cover the majority of our community, but then connects us with the Diamond Head neighborhood. And the proposed House District 22 is drawn to cover all of Waikiki with a portion of the Makali Mo'ili Ili along the Alawai Canal being included. There are three reasons we're opposed to this, and I will speak to them quickly because I do see that I am running out of time. First off, Makali Mo'ili Ili and Diamond Head in regard to House District 22 are not physical neighbors. They are very apart in physical connection and connecting them as this map does only using the Alawai golf course is against the intent of the law that physical, the districts should be physically contiguous. Um, secondly, the Diamond Head and Makali Mo'ili Ili neighborhoods are incredibly different. Makali Mo'ili Ili is low income and transient where Diamond Head is established and higher income. The interests of our communities of being this different concerns us as in the history of politics, more established and more wealthy communities uh, often uh, get their interests considered while the interests of low income communities are sacrificed. Lastly, uh, the portion of our community that would be looped in with Waikiki in District 21 is incredibly concerning. It's one of the most hot button issues facing our community is a proposed bridge to be built over the Alawai Canal. Folks in Waikiki want this bridge. Makali Mo'ili Ili does not want this bridge. The amount of folks that are going to be uh, voices will be drowned out uh, will not work. If you have to put us together with someone, we ask you to put us with someone who is immediately connected with us and shares our interests, such as Kapahu, Alawai, Alawana, Manoa, um, or Makiki, because those are the communities with our interests at heart that we are physically contiguous with and that we share common ground with. Thank you again for this difficult situation you're put into. I hope you actually listen to our concerns and that are at the December 22nd meeting, you do reject this proposal. Mahalo. 
before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that Commissioner Kennedy has joined the meeting. Uh, next testifier is Dylan Armstrong. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Aloha to Chair Muga Ishii and members of the Reapportionment Commission. And thank you for considering my testimony today. I am Dylan Armstrong. I'm the current chairperson of the Manoa Neighborhood Board, number seven. And I'm pleased to be joined by my fellow board member, Ellen Watson. Of course, my neighbor, uh, Dale Moana Gilmartin and other members of the Manoa community who are here in the meeting. Our community did receive um, extensive testimony at our last neighborhood board meeting in November, uh, all of which was either in support of the resolution that our board adopted, uh, which you have received as testimony, or uh, was in accordance with the concerns raised by Manoa community members, that our community would be gerrymandered or split in two uh, by the proposed technical group plan, particularly with the draft House District 20. Uh, what the neighborhood board did support on November 2nd in our meeting was a resolution in support of a unified House District comprising Manoa Valley as a neighborhood and entity. And specifically, the board endorsed the Hicks plan. I will provide as a bit of context that the uh, plan provided by another citizen, uh, I believe the name is Ralph Fukushima, uh, is very similar, but the board did not consider that plan at the time. So uh, to summarize, uh, the board specifically wants to keep Manoa as a cohesive uh, community in terms of its house district uh, redistricting in this process. The board supported the Hicks plan uh, unanimously, by the way, uh, with a vote of 11 members present and no testimony in opposition. And specifically, the board raised concerns centering on uh, the issues with uh, compliance with Hawaii revised statutes, section 25-2, uh, having to do with uh, districts that are compact and districts that follow recognizable features such as streets, streams, and clear geographical features, which the board uh, was concerned would not be followed with the proposed technical group uh, District 20 in the current redistricting plan. So those are the main points raised by the board. I do have some additional points in my individual capacity, but I see I'm running short on time. And with great respect for your deliberations, I want to thank you all for considering what I had to say. Okay, the next testifier is Marlies Riley. Hi, aloha. Um, my name is Mary Liz Riley. I am also a realtor and used to work with Judy at one time. I'm also the sister to Elizabeth Riley, sister-in-law, who is part of the Hawaii Kai board and who, like yourselves, worked tirelessly to better our state. I am actually testifying and I wrote a uh, testimony. I actually was on the news actually to get people involved. Um, a little disappointed not to see more people here, but I know that a lot of people will be watching later. Um, I am a longtime resident since the 60s of Hawaii Kai and I'm begging you not to divide our close knit community when there's other logical ways to accomplish as needed by your commission, especially using Makapu and the Hicks plan. Um, please don't take away what we have as our flagship, you know, Kaiser High School, Cocoa Head High School. Um, one uh, in particular building called the Peninsula. It's literally gonna be cut in half. So as a realtor, I can sell a property and say, oh, but you're gonna be part of Waimano. Sorry, but Hawaii Kai Fair Station, it's very first shopping center, Coco Marina, where I live at the Esplanade, all the waterfront properties, you know, including some of Cocoa Terrace, half of Kalama Valley. Come on, please, please, please don't do this. Keep our communities strong in its force to be heard and more reasonable. That's all I got. Thank you. Next testifier is Becky Gardner. Hold on, can you hear me? Yes. I'm just trying to find my button to um, start video. Okay. 
Okay. Aloha, everybody. My name is Becky Gardner. I am owner and principal of Policy Matters LLC. Uh, I'm also a member of the Kaimuki Neighborhood Board, but I'm not here representing the board, um, but I just want to disclose that. Uh, and also, um, maybe it will help the public understand my interest in this. I, I was a staff attorney for a big island legislator back in uh, 2011. Um, when the reapportionment plan was invalidated by the Supreme Court. And I did a lot of research um, in front of that lawsuit. And um, so I understand a lot of the legal ramifications and the background to this. And so I've been disappointed as to how things have gone along this um, this round. I've submitted a lot of testimony over the last several months. And if you go to... Um, my last testimony I just submitted, there is a link where it's hard to find the testimony um, submitted from earlier, but in my testimony, there's a link of where you can find the public testimony. And then you can see other links that I'm referring to in this testimony I'm giving today. Um, my first point is the Kaimuki Neighborhood Board had passed unanimously in November, a resolution opposing these plans. And mostly because um, it was in violation of article four, section six, no district shall be drawn as to unduly favor a person or political faction. Um, districts shall be compact and where practical submergence of an area in a larger district wherein substantially different socioeconomic interests predominate shall be avoided. And so this submergence, I would say, has occurred with the native Hawaiian population in Waimanalo. Also, um, the public housing, Kamehameha Public Housing, is split between three different districts. And um, I just want to show you this map of Kaimuki. I put here in yellow, the Kaimuki Neighborhood Board area, which is covering three different districts, house districts as proposed. And it is not lost on me, this proposed district here, um, there is an incumbent right here in this protrusion. The shape of this is rather vulgar. I just have, it's not lost on me there. And um, I don't know, I, I guess I'm just a little bit, uh, I, I, I just expect more from this commission. And I, I, ex I put more points. I have some questions about what was disclosed at the public hearing um, in East Hawaii the other day. And I want to understand better. It was explained at that hearing that the request to the military on the extraction data um, from the commission was very different from Commissioner Kennedy. And I wanna understand how the question was framed. As far as I know, that's not in the record. So I would like the commission to put in the record how these questions were posed to the military because why they gave us military data that's like half as much as given by Commissioner Kennedy. And um, also in the last meeting, um, we were told that the new data from the military, which shows twice as much, it's hard to connect the dependent data to the sponsor data. And in my testimony, I have a link to that data because it was, it was given to me. Um, I'm just wondering why you think there is no link to the dependent data, because I, I don't see that. Um, one last point, I'm so sorry, but there was an article in West Hawaii today, the other day, um, one commissioner was quoted saying that the safest way to avoid a lawsuit or challenge is to use the exact same process we used last time. I disagree. I think the safest way to avoid a, um, a lawsuit is to do your due diligence and really make the best efforts to do the most accurate extraction. And you have tools to do so. Um, and I, I really hope that this commission is going to do that so there is no lawsuit. I'm sorry for going over. And happy holidays, everybody. Thank you, Becky. Scott. Next testifier is Ingrid Peterson. Commissioners, are you supposed to see me? Oh, here. Now you can see I'm Kupuna, I'm old. Okay, I'm a Kailua resident. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. My husband's family actually has lived in Kailua for a hundred years. They were not missionary, but they were just early, the first Haole family to live here around, year round. Um, my family, bought our house that I now live in in 1963. Um, and my mother used to be on Kailua Neighborhood Board back when she helped um, create Kalama Beach Park. 
uh, another point is I used to teach elementary school in Waimanalo, so I'm for various reasons familiar with Waimanalo too. And my predominant point is that Makapu, as everyone except your technical committee or whatever you call it, um, points out, should be a natural boundary and you shouldn't combine our Windward communities with the Hawaii Kaisai communities um, for, for the reasons that both communities, neighborhood boards and citizens have pointed out. And it can easily be done as can be seen in the Hicks plan, um, the Ukishima plan, and also in Will Karan's plan. And I think the last one perhaps might be the best. Um, I know uh, Ukishima made some improvements in EVA. I was at the last meeting and heard about that. So that's my um, main objection. Um, and in general, looking at the maps that you guys came up with, they're really irregular. And I really suspect there's something fishy going on. There's a lot of politics involved here and protecting incumbents and probably also working against uh, progressive incumbents. I'm not sure, but people, the old Hawaii thing about don't rock the boat, it seems like that's going on. Um, but that's not your mission and you don't seem to be following your mission. You need to step up to what is your kuleana and step up to what is mandated as your task. It's not that hard if citizens can do it better than you can. Um, what else I was gonna say, I'm very upset about the military undercount and you should fix that. You've had that data, I think for a month now. And I'm upset that things haven't been open in public as much as they should be. Um, very disappointing to me. I think I forgot to say that I was elected in my precinct as a delegate to the last state democratic convention. Um, I, I'm very rooted to my community. Um, and I really expect the best of politicians and people like you who are volunteers, but appointed by politicians. I expect you to be doing what's right for the people. What is Pono? Why are you just chewing gum like that? Anyway, you seem kind of disrespectful. Um, what is Pono for the community? And um, I just expect, expect a lot more of you to adopt a better. Thank you. Next testifier is Rich. Aloha, thanks. Um, I'm a little late coming to this, and I'm really not well versed in the scope of all the the legal stuff involved with you know reapportionment and and. Uh, population changes and stuff like that. But I just have one simple question. Is there any group of people, and, I, and, and I live, I've lived in Hawaii Kite for 38 years, and I love Waimanalo. But I just want to know, is there any group of people in Waimanalo or a group of people in Hawaii Kite that want to merge the two? I don't think so. And I think, you know, your decision should be based on what the citizens and, and people who live here want to have. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Okay, the next testifier is Raynette Hall. Aloha everyone, thank you. Um, I appreciate this moment to speak and I'm coming in as a parent of students in Hawaii Kai. I have young children, one in Kaiser High School and one also at New Valley. I've lived in Hawaii Kai my whole life I am, you know, I'm very proud of my community. And I grew up in Waimanalo. I have family members in Waimanalo. And I also have friends I hung out with throughout my whole life from Waimanalo. I love that community. But my concern is that Kaiser High School was taken into the windward side. And I'm an alumni from Kaiser. If I, in the future, I don't know how the government works technically on school board, you know, where the school lines are to where our representatives, you know, districts are. But my concern is if you put Kaiser High School into the Windward area, my children who are not considered a part of the Windward area because of where we're located in Hawaii Kai, will have to put in a GE. There are limited numbers of GEs that are allowed for each school. So for me, that's concerning. One I have there. So next time when my child from New Valley comes in, do I have to put in for a GE? I don't know if that's something you guys have thought about taking 
Kaiser, and I don't know if this affects it either, but I do not agree with the way it is pulling Port Lock, Coco Marina. I, I'm a small business owner in Coco Marina Shopping Center. And also our issues in Hawaii Kai are so different from the issues on the windward side. And to me, your representative has to understand your community, just like Dale was saying, representatives are the people you're supposed to talk to. And if we're in a different section from people in Portlock who have the same issue as us, their representative may not think the same way ours does. We need to have, I feel like this is, it's, it's the wrong way to go for this. But again, as a parent and a mother in the community, my concern is the school. I don't wanna be redistricted separate from my my alma mater and my school that I live in the area of for. So that's all I have to say. Um, I appreciate all the people who have said their piece today because I agree with all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Next testifier is CJ Oda. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Good afternoon, Commission. Uh, my name is actually Wesley Ora. <laughs> Sorry, uh, CJ is my wife. Um, you know, I, I, I just want to add that, you know, reapportionment. Sorry, I, I am a resident of the Manoa community and I am the president of Be Ready Manoa, which is one of the many um, community groups that represent the valley. And ultimately, you know, reapportionment should make sense, you know, to a community that's being impacted. And it can't be based solely on numbers that ultimately result in a proposal that will not effectively serve our needs. You know, our community has unique issues and uh, unique features. And, you know, our representation is gonna be diluted and fragmented if the proposed splitting of the valley actually happens. And, you know, for those of us that work and, uh, you know, that represent and work with various community organizations within uh, Manoa Valley, you know, I strongly feel that we have to have, you know, a single point of government contact with clear lines of, you know, representation. I support the Hicks plan and uh, as it maintains the existing and natural boundaries. And we really need government in this case, hopefully to listen to its constituents, myself included. Thank you. Okay, next testifier is Ken Farm. Hi, thank you, uh, commissioners. My name is Ken Farm. I'm a little further away from uh, the area of Hoikai, but uh, I live in the Kalihi area. The reason I bring this up is because looking at the different plans, um, one of the areas, and you know, we have to try to be as uh, as accommodating as possible, is in my area where they would cut part of the valley uh, of an area and basically just use a road, uh, and we'll be having the same problems with the lack of representation. I'll be giving testimony from this as long as also at a central area because of, of the way that this is set up. Furthermore, um, I would like to say, looking at and listening to what people were saying, I think that the Ukushima and Shigamasa plans, I think is something worth looking at, um, but also looking at the proposed uh, issue of addressing House 51. Um, I know you don't have a really easy, uh, process of making decisions here. I know that you're going to get bombarded no matter what you do, uh, but I want you to consider other community outside of that too as well. I do agree that, you know, why Manalo should not be part of Hawaii Kai, two different communities. So I really hope that that can be accommodating as well, but also consider other areas like mine with this decision. Thank you very much. Okay, there are no further testifiers. All right, let's ask one more time. Is anybody that wants to raise their hand and testify? Aline Watson. Wait, there's a next testifier is Ryan Tam. We have uh, Ellen Watson raising her hand also. So let's go with Ryan, if you're available. Or if not, Ellen, uh, you're on mute still. If you can unmute yourself, you can testify. 
There you thank go. You. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was waiting on you. Um, I have testified at your prior meetings. I have submitted written testimony. I'm a resident of Manoa. I serve on Manoa Neighborhood Board. The boards, many boards, 10 more, have passed resolutions, right? And so at your October 28th meeting, you said that you needed to pass the technical committee's plan, even though most everybody opposes the plan and they have given you copious amounts of written and oral testimony to support that, okay? But you tell us, you told everyone, me, at the October meeting, well, we just got to pass a technical group's plan so we can further the process, so we can start the hearings. And I said, it just feels like a railroad, yeah? You're just wanting us to drink the Kool-Aid here. And we're going through a lot of effort sharing what we're concerned about and fearing what you're doing. You hold a lot of power. And, and I don't know that you're really listening to us. So different commissioners said, yeah, we're listening. Yeah, we're listening. We're, it's just a starting point. We're going to tweak our plan, tweak our map as we go along. And so we've gone along now since October 28th, and it's December 4th. So I want to ask you today, what have you changed in your plan and your mapping from the community feedback on how the existing plan that you unanimously adopted doesn't work for the communities? So maybe you can help us feel better by telling us what work you've done and how it has shifted. Maybe you can show us the shift in map so far because you said you were gonna work on it as an ongoing process. You weren't just gonna hear all the people talking at the, from the public and all these hearings and then sit down and finally decide. So perhaps you could share with us what effect our input has had on your mapping, because you said you were going to do that. So I guess that's what I'd like to hear from you today. Thanks, Ellen. Just to clarify process, no revisions to the maps will be made until the public hearing process is complete. And we have a few more to go throughout the state. Uh, Ryan, looks like you're available now. Yeah, hello. Um, Aloha, Chair Mujiishi, um, uh, Commissioners and uh, Chief Election Officer Nago. Um, my name is Ryan Tam. I'm speaking on behalf of the Almohana Kakako Neighborhood Board Number 11. At our regular meeting on November 23rd, 2021, the board did adopt a position to strongly urge the commission to keep the Mauka and Makai portions of Kakako within a contiguous legislative district. So the current House District 30 incorporates the areas both Mauka and Makai of Almohana Boulevard. The proposed uh, House District 23 uh, includes the areas Malka of Almohana Boulevard, while the proposed District 27 includes the areas of Mackay of Almohana Boulevard and incorporated with downtown Honolulu. Um, so it would be very simple to incorporate the Mackay areas of Kakako into the proposed District 23, especially since there's no residential population in this area. The board also uh, urges the commission, again, to strongly consider alternative plans that minimize the population deviation and keeps the neighborhoods together. Um, while our board did not specifically endorse the Hicks plan, uh, because it did also split Kakako and Almohan into different areas. Um, however, as I mentioned, you know, we do urge the board to minimize population de deviation and keep the neighborhoods together. Uh, lastly, we did want to support and acknowledge the assistance and leadership of all the other uh, neighborhood boards uh, working on this issue, including uh, Chair Hicks from Kailua and others. Um, that concludes my testimony. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Looks like Lisa Bishop is raising her hand. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Dylan, I would like to go back to um, 
to what you uh, responded to Ellen about so that I understand. Um, you said that um, no updates or projected or proposed updates to the proposed plans that was voted on that we're now having all these public hearings about will be available until after all of the public hearings are done, right? And they're scheduled throughout this month. Is that correct? Correct. Okay, so your next scheduled meeting then is of the whole commission that's not a public hearing is the 22nd of December. So is that the date when you're gonna, the commission is going to unveil the new proposed plan or, or they're going to say, no, we've heard all the public testimony and we're still gonna go with the proposed plan that um, people have been testifying about. So what's gonna happen on the 22nd of December? Uh, the technical committee is going to have to meet and review all the public testimony and then they'll decide whether or not they want to propose revisions at that meeting. Okay, and so if you, the technical committee or the technical group um, decides that you don't want to propose any revisions at the meeting on the 22nd of December, then we as citizens and residents, do we not have a, any further say in that? It's a unilateral decision? Correct. But the commission okay. will vote at that time. All right, does anybody else have public testimony? There are no hands raised. Okay, going once, going twice. Anybody else want to provide testimony? All right, if not, thank you everyone for attending and providing your input. This concludes the public hearing.